everyone. Thank you for joining me. Welcome to the channel. Last Sunday, a week ago, a week from last Sunday, not too long ago, it was a Sunday morning, and I was at the Waffle House, and an alarm went off telling me to go to Centipede Press and order Alligator. And uh, so I ordered the book. I posted it up online that I'd ordered it at the Waffle House. And then a subscriber named Musashi-san asked me, didn't you order Bats Out of Hell? And I said, hang on a second. And I went and looked and saw it. If I had scrolled down that email just a little bit farther, I'd have seen that there were two order links available on that Sunday. Bats Out of Hell, Out of Hell by Guy N. Smith. So I mashed in buttons and ordered that book and got it coming. And even though I ordered Alligator half an hour before, I got this one first. And I think I got it yesterday or the day before, and it's just been sitting on the shelf. But it's time to open this mother up and see what she looked like. The first time I ever heard of Bats Out of Hell by Guy M. Smith, it was uh, sometime in 2020. And I don't even remember where I'd read it, but somehow somebody said, this book predicted the pandemic. This book predicted COVID-19. So I, I think I looked it up a little bit and saw that there were some similarities. And uh, I haven't read the book yet, but there were some similarities. And, and you know, uh, anyway, that's what got the book on my radar. And I don't know for sure, but it seems... Not coincidental that a couple years later, Centipede Press has published this same book. I don't know if it was in the works before that or not, but I assume kind of coincidental with the comparisons between this book and the pandemic and the COVID-19, coronavirus, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, here it is, a uh, light book. Centipede Press is a great publisher packages their book in oversized boxes, wraps them up in bubble wrap, hoping to get them to me in good condition. So let's see how it worked out this time. And this time we also have extras. Something that's been happening a lot lately is extra dust jackets. And this one is The Search for Joseph Tully by William Hallahan. And I've got that book up here. And I've also got that dust jacket I showed it to you on a recent Centipede Press book unboxing. So now I've got extras. Uh, nice, beautiful, amazing dust jacket. The artwork is phenomenal. But here is Bats Out of Hell. And mine says number 342 on the back. I reckon, I reckon that's what it is. It's wrapped in shrink wrap. So the first thing I want to do is to get it out of the shrink wrap. This is a stressful, stressful time for a lot of a lot of folks because they're worried that when they cut the shrink wrap, they're going to damage their book. You got a knife or a blade or something so close to your precious collectible item that you just spent money on and you don't want to ruin it. And I, I don't fear that at all because I've got a flawless technique. It has never, ever failed as long as I executed the technique. And the technique is you cut the plastic, not the book. Every single time it works, as long as you cut the plastic and not the book. So let's get this out of the plastic. A lot of folks will keep the books in the plastic. Uh, new sealed. That seems to be in the collectible world. New in package, stuff like that. Mint in mint box and such as that. So collectors tend to want to keep stuff sealed up. Nice and neat. That's a, that's a neat caveat when you're buying or selling collectible things. But I don't keep my books in the plastic. I don't anymore. Long ago I did. And... Uh, there could be some possibilities, and if you want to get into some possibilities, I've talked about that a lot, but there could be some possibilities. Let's take a look at Bats Out of Hell. First thing I see with this dust jacket, I don't know if you can tell that or not, you notice something about it. The dust jacket is die cut, so I see the book through this egg-shaped hole, oval-shaped hole. There's the back, just amazing, beautiful, terrific artwork by Ben Baldwin. Ben Baldwin is an artist that I've got quite a few things with Ben featuring Ben Baldwin artwork, and I like it. I like it a lot. 
Let's take this dust jacket off, show it to you all stretched out, and then I'll show you how cool this book looks without it. The, the book cover is a, a replica or a re whatever. They've redone an original paperback dust jacket artwork for that book cover. Uh, so it's, it's not the original, but it's a, a recreation of the original. And here is the book. Beautiful. This is what uh, I kind of, I guess you call library binding. And man, it looks nice. Looks nice. That excellent artwork on there. <clears throat> so I'm not sure how much artwork is included. And that's what we're here to find out. What all is included. There are end papers. If you can't, I don't know how well you can tell. It's not just plain, but there is some, some design in, in some way to it. There's some more. I'll show you what I can find. I believe there were 400 copies of this book published, and it's not a long one. You can see it's relatively short, 160-ish uh, pages, but we'll take a look and find out for sure. Let's, let's skip over this stuff. Excellent artwork already. I like this book. It's a, it's a neat little edition. It cost uh, $60 directly from Centipede Press. And as far as I know, there are still signed copies available. So I recommend jump on board Centipede Press website, get you a signed copy while you still can, because one day you may have to pay a whole lot more to get them, or they may not be available at all. Seems like, seems like Centipede Press books are not very common on the secondary market. A lot of publishers will print, uh, publish a book and there'll be always loads and loads of them on the secondary market selling high or low or in between but for some reason i just don't see as many centipede press editions for sale on the secondary market i guess maybe it's a publisher that people buy and keep it's what it seems anyway um here is our text sized paper you can see it's not a it's not a bright white it's i wouldn't call it a creamy color but it's not a bright white, and the, the the font size would be about what I'd expect. I'd say medium, very medium on the size, so I wouldn't think it would be tough for folks with the tired eyes for the reading. And throughout, I've skipped a lot of these, but throughout, I'll see these pictures of the bats on the chapter dividers. I don't know if they're on every one, but uh, they, I've seen them quite a bit flipping through here, pictures of the bats, and I'm not sure about what other kind of interior artwork there is but that's what i'm looking for and uh, there is a little bit more here in the back i forgot i always like to do this among the first things but in the back of the book you'll find the signature pages for the signed editions of centipede press and there is this one a very nice signature page uh mine is number 342 out of 400 copies like i said it's got a facsimile signature by guy n smith that's a touch that i i like it makes the books feel more complete even though the author is deceased to have what looks like his signature on there to me it just makes the signature page looks better also artist ben baldwin and stephen jones who wrote an introduction an original introduction for this edition there was also uh, an introduction by um, by Guy N. Smith, which had already been written, and just a little bit more artwork before we go. But a very nice little book, and I didn't mention the built-in ribbon page marker. This one does not have sprayed ends. It is a, a very nice little book. Looks beautiful, but it's $60. It's on the economically priced side for Centipede Press. So uh, an excellent addition to my collection. I'm sure glad that a subscriber reminded me, hey, look down the email a little bit farther. There's a book in there you might want. Uh, it hasn't sold out yet, so I probably would have figured it out. But if it had, I'd have been ski rude. And anyway, the subscriber saved me, so thank you for that. And I can think of no more lies to tell. It looks very good. I like it a lot. Say la vie, baby.